This video is an overview of an internal fix on the X-Drive transfer case servo motor, also known as a transfer case actuator. This fix applies to first generation BMW X3s. This fix will be of interest to you if your vehicle has simultaneously illuminated 4x4 brake and ABS warning lights on. You may also hear a clicking noise from underneath the car every time the engine is turned off. Remember to work safe and work smart. Work in a well-ventilated area, protect yourself from injury at all times, and attempt all work at your own risk. Your workshop should be well ventilated and have a hard surface if raising or jacking up a vehicle. Remember to think about your own safety and the safety of others when making repairs or modifications to your vehicle. Even if you don't feel qualified to do this work, watching the video will give you a sense of the repair and the necessary parts and equipment that will be needed if you decide to have the job done by a professional BMW workshop. Before you begin, consult your owner's manual or the appropriate repair manual for your vehicle. Hi, my name is Charlie Burke from Bentley Publishers. What I have in my hand here is an X-Drive servo motor. It came out of our 2007 BMW X3, first generation X3. Um, it's got a couple connectors on it. It's mounted to the transfer case using four bolts. The transfer case is, is kind of in the middle of the car. This thing's mounted below the driver's side. Uh, pretty straightforward to get to this thing. This BMW X3 had three dash warning lights on, the 4x4 light, the ABS light, and the brake light. It also made a loud clicking noise every time we turned the engine off. So we knew the noise was coming from this servo motor, or more specifically from a plastic gear inside of the servo motor. BMW sells this servo motor as a complete unit and it's quite expensive. Um, since our car had high mileage on it and it was also out of warranty, we decided to make an internal repair on this um, servo motor. Uh, the good news is that a plastic gear is available from the aftermarket. This plastic gear uh, can either crack or wear out and it's mounted down inside this transmission of this, this servo motor. So today we're going to show you how to get this out of here, get this gear out, uh, replace it, and put the servo motor back in. You won't lose any gear oil when you take this servo motor out, or very little gear oil, and you're not going to need a scan tool to reset fault memory or reset adaptations. So let's show you how to get this thing out and on the workbench and make the repair. Here are the tools we'll need to get the servo motor off the transfer case. A 10 millimeter open end, a 13 millimeter socket with extension and ratchet, an 18 millimeter open end wrench and 18 millimeter socket, an E10 torque socket, a 10 millimeter driver, and a small flat blade screwdriver to aid in unlocking the two harness connectors. With hand and eye protection fitted and the key removed from the ignition, let's get the vehicle in the air. Position left arms directly under the four hard rubber jack pads. We do not recommend raising the vehicle if any of the jack pads are missing. With the vehicle raised in the air, position a tall jack stand directly under the transfer case. Raise the jack until the weight of the transfer case is supported. Now we'll need to lower the transfer case cross member. It is bolted to the vehicle floor using four bolts and a bushing through bolt. Using a 13 millimeter socket, remove the four bolts. Use an 18 millimeter socket to remove the bushing through bolt. With all bolts removed, lower the cross member and allow it to hang freely out of the way. Next, remove the heat shield bolt and gently bend the heat shield down and out of the way. Disconnect the servo motor harness connectors. You will need to release the connector locks on the plastic connectors to remove them. Using an E10 torque socket, remove the four bolts holding the servo motor to the transfer case. The top bolt is the hardest to reach. With all the bolts removed, wiggle the servo motor and pull it off the transfer case. With the servo motor on the bench, use a T25 Torx driver to remove the four bolts holding the motor to the motor case. Carefully slide the motor assembly off. Next is the trickiest part, prying off the seal cover. You'll notice the cover is peened to the motor case in multiple spots. The best way I have found to get this cover off is to use a small flat blade screwdriver in a corner. 
Once you get it started, it may pop off, or you may need to slowly work your way around the cover until it comes free. Try not to bend the cover and go slow. Now, working inside the drive gear assembly, remove the small retaining circlip using a small circlip pliers or a pair of small flat blade screwdrivers. This can be a little tricky to get started. Remove the washer below the circlip and set aside. Carefully rotate out the gear assembly, making sure not to damage the O-ring seal as you work it off the shaft. Here you can see the wear in the plastic drive gear. Carefully pry off the old gear and press on the new gear. Reinstall the gear assembly while rotating it down into position. Install the washer and the circlip. If necessary, bend the circlip back into normal shape prior to installing. It should audibly click into place when correctly seated. Now we'll need to re-secure the cover. Here I've mounted the case in a vise. Be sure to straighten the cover if it was distorted or twisted during removal. Reinstall the cover being careful not to damage the seal lip. Tap the cover down until fully seated. Then using a drift, repeat the cover in a few spots to hold it securely in place. Reinstall the motor to the case. Notice there are three locating pins to ensure proper orientation. Install and tighten the four mounting screws. Installation of the servo motor and transfer case crossmember is the reverse of removal. Tighten all fasteners using the proper torques. Feedback or questions? Visit our tech forums or our online tech library at bentleypublishers.com.